I'm Kyle Sardinia, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Today we're going to talk about accessing the Niagara Data Service API um, and authenticating to it. So to access and use the APIs, you need credentials. Creating and managing a service account provides these credentials. A service account authorizes you to use the provided APIs in user applications uh, by determining the access rights. Uh, a service account uh, for each customer provides API authentication by verifying the identity of the requests using a client ID and secret. Service accounts for Niagara Cloud Suite use the OAuth client credential flow. Um, we will show the process to create a service account in uh, Niagara Cloud Suite portal, as well as using a client ID and client secret to obtain an access token that can then be used to authenticate to the APIs. Uh, first, let's look at the relevant documentation back in the Niagara Resource Center to make sure we have it on hand. So on, on the Cloud Suite documentation page, you will see here this link to NDS API Guide. This will have all the information about connecting to the API, including managing those service accounts. In order to create a service account, you do have to be a partner admin and logged into the Niagara Cloud Suite portal. So let's go ahead and log into Niagara Cloud Suite and create a service account. All right, two-factor authentication approved. Now that I'm logged into Niagara Cloud as a partner administrator, I can view the customers that I have set up in my portal. And for each customer, if I go ahead and click on this customer, I have the ability to create service accounts in this view. So in the partner uh, login, I can go to the customer and then create a specific service account for them. So in here, I have the ability to create a new service account. You can see all the service accounts that I've already created or um, have been created by my company, rather. And we can see in the service account, I can details, I can add some things like pro tips uh, account. And I can say uh, testing off for pro tips just to give myself a little bit of a reminder, and I can set the expiration date. The default is 180 days, and that is the maximum. Um, now I can click on uh, Manage Access, once I have all that set, to look at all the projects that I have for this specific customer. And I know that I have uh, some devices set up here, and I want to give it access to this Pine Mist Jace that I have set up. So once I give it access to whatever projects or all projects um, that I am authorizing this system, uh, this service account to see, um, I can go ahead and create that account. It will spit out for me a client ID, which I can copy, um, and I can paste that and, uh, to save that. Um, and then I can also uh, view my client secret here, and this is not being saved, so you do need to copy that and then protect that. Um, in a file location and provide these credentials to whoever will be accessing the API. So just to show, I'm going to uh, copy that um, client ID and then I'm going to copy that. Uh, do that for a colon here and save, save this file for future reference. Now that I have my client secret saved, I can go ahead and close this. And I can go in and see that if I looked at my Pro Tips account, I can indeed see the client ID that is there. And I can view the details. Um, I can see that the ex it expires 180 days from now. Um, and then I can also see the client ID that I might need to recopy for any reason to compare. Or, um, but I can not view the client secret. If I do need to generate a new secret for this client ID, it will invalidate this client secret 
and then I will have new um, new credentials to provide for API access. Um, also in here for the specific account, I can come back in and change what that what access, what projects, and what devices that account has access to. Now that I have uh, my client ID in secret, I need to use them to get my access token. We are going to request authentication to the token endpoint that's listed in the NBS API documentation. I'll show a few different ways how to accomplish this. First by using built-in Windows command line tools and then using a few different apps to show a potentially more realistic use case. So let's bring up the command line. And let's also show my client ID and secret that I saved from earlier. Now, if you're using a newer version of Windows, you can check to see if curl is installed uh, by running the curl version command. I also am going to change directories because I have a, in my pro tips directory, I have saved this file of my client ID separated by a colon with my client secret. Now, the reason I have this up here on the screen is because I do need to um, use a base64 encoding um, for this um, uh, colon separated string uh, to be able to pass it along um, uh, to re request my access token. So, uh, there are plenty of uh, online tools to be able to base encode a string, but also uh, Windows has the cert util uh, command which uh, can take a text file and create an encoded uh, base64 um, string that you can use in your uh, curl request. If I run the command to take my client ID secret and create my base.txt, I can now look at my directory and I should see that I now have a base text and I can uh, just show that I have this uh, encoded string here that I can copy and I'm going to just save that in this text file for now. And that is what I will use <clears throat> to make my request to the token endpoint. Now that I have my base64 encoded client ID and secret, um, I can go ahead and make the request to the token endpoint. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the curl command, and it's going to be a, a post to auththing1.com, and then this uh, URL is listed in the documentation. Um, and we can uh, pass in a header for the content type, um, the URL encoded string, a uh, header for the authorization basic with the uh, 64 encoded string here, and also we can pass into the body the uh, grant type, the client credentials, and the scope for NCP read. So I will go ahead. It successfully pings back with my access token, which I can just copy that. Um, it will say it's of the token type, it's a bear um, token, and it expires in uh, one hour here. Uh, that's in seconds, and then it uh, gives me back the scope. So now that I have my access token, uh, I can use that, as long as it's valid, uh, to request directly from any of the APIs. So now I can use that token to access one of the APIs. So um, to access just the entity model, uh, I have the, uh, the post to the URL for Niagara Cloud, um, the API version one entity model here. With my customer number, um, that I can pull from the cloud portal view, um, just right out of the URL for when I'm looking at the customer. Um, 
we'll go into detail on some of the APIs in further videos, but just to point out the the header that accepts uh, wildcard and then the authorization bear token that I've copied um, the token directly in here. And then I have a header for uh, the content type of application JSON. And if you're using Windows curl, you will see that this uh, JSON string searching for a point name has uh, backslashes before the quotations. That's a, a Windows restriction, I guess, of curl. Um, so uh, I'm looking for uh, any and the comparison type uh, point for my system GUID, which I pulled um, directly from uh, my RPK authenticator on the cloud service view. So just to go ahead and show that the uh, API works, it will spit back a, a list of all of the points that I have um, that are that have been uploaded. Now you may be more interested in using an application like Postman to uh, ping a bunch of different APIs and look for a bunch of different information. Using Postman I can set up uh, different environments and um, set up variables so that I can make multiple calls again and again. Um, I have my uh, client ID here and I have my client secret saved as variables that I can use. Um, in various collections to uh, to search my uh, to query against my API, um, and then I also have a variable for access token expiry that gets set when the token is generated. So if I look back at a collection here, I have um, in my NDS API for Pine Miss, I have the authorization type set as a bearer. A token and that current access token variable gets set um, whenever I um, go to execute one of these posts and there's a script that runs to, that I have in JavaScript to um, look for that ping one server I have the variable set for the um, that environment ID that we have as well as my system GUID and my customer number these can all be can all be set um, so that if I go to do uh, something like a find all points. I have my customer ID set as that variable, my system uh, GUID that's set as the variable, and so I can come back and just say, hey, I'm looking for any point, and it will populate a JSON response of all the points from that device. Now I can also look at another uh, cloud-hosted application such as Grafana that has built in support for OAuth, so if I want to look at some of the data sources I already have uh, already have set up. Um, in here you can set a name for the data source and choose the authentication type for OAuth um, and set the client credentials and have the auth set in, in the header. I have my client ID that I copied and pasted in here as well as my client secret. Um, the token URL provided in the documentation as well as the scope. Um, also, you need to provide access to the host of Niagara-Cloud. Now that that's all configured, I can set up um, just API calls based on telemetry IDs and cloud IDs and build out dashboards. Um, uh, there are some visualization tools that I have already set up to look for um, specific point data in my query here. So if I want to look at the query itself that I sent. Uh, there are some tools to look and say, hey, I am um, looking for, in this system, go with this cloud ID, start and end time um, for those records. And um, it's pinging back and doing all this visualization for me. So um, this might be something a little bit more realistic than going through the Windows uh, command line. Um, with that, you know a few different ways now to use the client credentials to get data from NDS APIs. And look forward for more videos uh, that go into detail on the uh, egress API as well as the uh, control API or the live read write um, API. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.